Uh, again, Bruce McConnell here, back from being up in Canada doing some training at a convention. Also, I want to remind you folks that there's a couple of bloopers that got made in video number LST007. That was the last one I had done before I went up to Canada. So that way you have the reference. You can look at number seven, and then you can come look at this LST008, and we'll talk about the two bloopers. And also, we're going to step over to the other board. It's not a blooper, but I want to make sure we have a clarification on what we talked about in the engine air box on episode 007. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is engine air box, and we talked about that in episode 007 just a little bit ago, but there's a clarification I want to make that I feel very strongly about, that a lot of people have a concern, not as much a concern, but a question of what happens inside this air box when the engine's running. So this is going to be episode number 8, LST v-008 okay and it's only going to be two slides but it's going to be fairly short so let's go ahead and go to the second slide all right here's the question how does carbon get into the engine air box now you'll notice if you look at this picture you'll notice there's a lot of black carbony substance that pretty much is is encompassing everything inside the air box okay that's carbon well what is carbon? Well, there's a fancy word for carbon. It's called a pentane insoluble. Okay, what that pentane is is fuel, uh, actually unburnt fuel, and insoluble means that it's it's gonna stick there. Okay, it's not doesn't break down. Okay, but one of the things I wanted to clarify that we clarified, I believe, in in episode seven, is how do we get this carbon buildup, this oily mixture of carbon and oil, inside the airbox? Well says here, how do I get carbon inside the air box, the engine air box? says, hint, it has something to do with internal cylinder pressure and air box pressure. It is a momentary pressure differential thing. Highly technical term, correct? All right, let me explain that. We, don't have, to, we have the power stroke, okay, which means the engine is rotating, piston comes up, we compress the air, right about four degrees forward, top dead center, we inject fuel on top of that piston. Okay, and what will happen is the heat of, of compression will ignite that fuel air mixture and what will happen is that fuel air mixture will drive that piston down. It will be in the power stroke. Right here, power stroke. The piston is moving down. Now, once the inertia has been set up for that one cylinder power stroke coming down, as it's coming down, remember we talked about the, the operation wheel in several videos ago? Well, about 103 degrees after top dead center, the exhaust valves, right here, the exhaust valves begin to open. Well, what do we need to do? Well, from the time that piston fires, that fuel air mixture, ignites that fuel air mixture, driving this piston and connecting rod down, rotating the crankshaft, <clears throat> what will happen is the inertia is already set up in here. So make no mistake, that piston is going down. So as the piston is going down before that top ring clears the top edge of that port liner, or liner port actually be the right thing to call it, what happens is the pressure inside that cylinder has to be approximately equal to what the pressure is inside the airbox. But it's not. The pressure inside the cylinder is always just a little bit more inside the cylinder. So when that top ring of that piston clears the top of the port, you actually get a little puff back or blowout of combustion gases into the airbox. Now, these, burnt, these are burnt molecules that are now eking out here just for a millisecond. Because what's going to happen in here, pressure inside the cylinder is going to be greater than the airbox pressure as soon as that top ring clears the port. We get a puff back or a puff out of, of this combustion air inside this airbox area. So that air is going to float around and like Bob Daly said, which is absolutely right, what's going to happen is the oil that's floating around in the airbox will connect itself <clears throat> to anything and everything inside that air box and I will have an oily, carbony condition inside this air box. And Bob said it perfectly a minute ago was that the old, on the new engine you either have no or very little carbon buildup. But as that engine wears, in time the carbon buildup will get greater and greater because of wear inside that piston rings and the liner and the puff back in there gets a little bit greater as the engine gets older. So we now know that on during the power stroke, the exhaust valves are going to open, the top compression ring clears the top portion of the cylinder liner, and we have an air pressure differential momentarily, because think about it, 
as the exhaust valves are still open, as that piston comes clear down to the bottom, the bottom of that stroke, the exhaust valves are still wide open. Why? Because as the air rushes in, it will take and remove any spent or com combustion gases or molecules inside that cylinder and run them out through the exhaust manifold. So as that piston comes back up, remember air swirling around here all the time, as that piston comes back up, fresh air is now fully charged, the exhaust valves are closed, and now I'm back on my compression stroke. So, two things we get. We get a little puff back inside each power assembly that has a little bit of flotation of this carbon in the air and the oil that's hitting this piston. And again, like Bob said, between the ferro grooves and also the oil between the piston and the liner, that will allow that oil to float out into space here in this area. And those two will combine and they'll adhere to this area inside the air box. And that is why you have an oily, carbony condition inside that engine. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Uh, thank you for watching. And remember, go to our website. It has lst-ca.com. Once again, it's lst-ca.com. we got some new things coming up. Go look at it. Thanks. Have a safe day.